Welcome to episode three of Shame Talks. It's the trilogy episode. We have made it to the third episode of the podcast, which means statistically this is probably going to be the worst podcast. We've also killed off a lot of uh, the supporting characters from previous podcasts. But with me tonight, I have three guys that were here from the beginning. They survived all three episodes to get here. Jason Mayer, Jason Richardson, and Chris Ward. Uh, welcome back, guys. Ready to talk movies again? Let's do it. Yes. All right. Woo-hoo. So we're, we're doing trilogies this week. So we are. there's a couple of special conditions we're going to get to closer to the end. Uh, overall, we're going to kind of just discuss three movies that were released in order that create a trilogy uh, storyline or not storyline or whatever. Um, so we'll just we'll start it off with the biggest, the the nine part triple trilogy uh, with Star Wars. And we'll start with the best of them, which is episodes four, five and six, uh, which I feel like are pretty solid from top to bottom. And, and of all of the Star Wars trilogies, it's the best one. Absolutely. Uh, George Lucas decided to actually get assistance. George mm-hmm. Lucas decided to listen to people. Uh, he Irving Kirshner, Lawrence maybe Kasdan. he didn't. I was gonna say maybe he knew he bit off more than he could chew with the second and third one. I don't know. Even though Episode Four is by far my favorite, um, five and six are super super solid and and easily one of if not the best trilogy of all time. No matter what movies you're talking about, so, sure for me. Yes. It, it, it's one of the trilogies where I feel like the third one does. I know a lot of people don't care for Return, especially because of the Ewoks or whatnot, but that never bothered me. I think I was just age appropriate for it. Um, so that's a that's a solid trilogy for me that I feel like uh, when I ranked them, I, I gave episode four and eight. I gave episode five and nine, and I just went back down to an eight for Return of the Jedi. I kind of feel like they're all right there at really good movies. Uh, either you guys feel any of you guys feel any differently about them? What I would say I would go with episode four, probably like a seven and a half, because it it just it, it being an origin story, sure. even though it's episode four, but I mean it is the origin story in yeah in our continuity. Yep. It was just it was a little bit more plotting, um, a little bit slower moving, but Empire is always going to be, in my mind, the best of the three, and then Jedi. I would say probably gets an eight or an eight and a half because you get the payoff. You get, sure. you, you get, you get everything that was you know set up in empire. But again, maybe it's you and all of us are mostly in the same, we're all in the same demographic. Those Ewoks, I mean, at those, at the, you know, at the time they're like, Oh, it's cute. You know, yada, yada, yada. It's sure. fun. But as an adult, it just doesn't do the same thing for me now. Sure. Jay Bruce? I think um, as a as a child, I saw all three of the four, five, and I saw four, five, and six in the theaters and their actual play dates. Mm-hmm. And for me, as a as a child, I didn't have that mentality of really kind of breaking down, you know, thinking about film and whatnot. I just went and I just enjoyed the theatrical experience of Star Wars. So four, five, and six, in my heart. They kind of are on all equal. They just all tied together, and it was different stories through each one, but kind of led to a finale per se. Sure. Um, but now, as an adult looking back, I think the real meat was Empire Strikes Back. But to be a child and going to see the original Star Wars on the big screen never seen anything like that before four years old um was an epic just uh, unbelievable one of the best theater experiences ever so yeah but looking at star wars now the uh number four it is a little dry in parts but it is kind of a setup but still as a kid though it was big and exciting and thrilling for sure so let's get let's jump to 1999 and the prequel trilogy so now we got episodes one, two, and three, which I feel started off good because I don't hate episode one. I, Jar Jar doesn't bother me anymore, and I feel like they go very downhill in a in a steep slope. 
Anybody? I think Attack uh, of the Clones was the worst of those three. And and the dialogue is just the dialogue is absolutely terrible. Anakin and the what Padme, Padme. Padme. Oh, it's just awful. Just just awful. And, but I will say, like, when that first came out, you mm-hmm. know, I just kind of embraced it. But then in thinking about it and watching it over again, sure. Within that sh- short period of time, I was like, uh, yeah, it just it was something missing. There wasn't the heart wasn't there like the four, five, and six. See, and now I'm having trouble trying to decide do I think three picked back up enough with like killing younglings in order sixty six? Jason says no. Nope. You're talking about number three? Yeah, episode three, like Revenge I'm, of the Sith. Like I, I like Revenge of the Sith a lot compared to Attack of the Clones. I I, I liked I thought Sith was good. Okay. Jason, you're a no on that? Dude, I, and you know, because of May the 4th and because of talking about Star Wars and my kids watching Rebels, I was like, you know what? I'm just starting the whole saga over from the beginning. Mm-hmm. I hit play on one right now. I'm in the and I'm watching it episodically while I'm watching the kids during the day and folding laundry, whatever the case may be. And man, two and three are both bores to get through, man, for me. Like I, the both of them are ridiculous long, the dialogue, the dialogue actually doesn't hurt me now nearly as bad as it did then, even though it's still really bad. Um, I think two and three are pretty much on par with each other for crap. Um, Whereas number one, um, I actually have hardly any problems with number one whatsoever. Jar Jar still doesn't bother me to this day, even though I know everybody else hated his guts. Um, but yeah, like um, the payoff of that lightsaber fight alone is just worth it all. For sure. And so. I did I did hate Jar Jar in 1999. I just eventually got over him as time went on. Uh, Wardo? You know, which, I w- oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I wish that... Um, uh, I'm trying to think of a, another series where... You know how when you look at like James Bond today, the the James Bond movies today, Mm -hmm. compared to the James Bond movies back in the day, and even like Christopher Nolan's Batman series, there was an element of seriousness and grit and great acting, good dialogue good story. Um, And I just kind of feel like with as big as star Wars was four, five and six, and then they go to do the prequels and years later, they then bring that back 1999. I didn't like all the CGI and such. And they kind of took away more from the, the, the sets that they used for the, the, for four, five and six. And I thought it was too, too too digital. What I learned this week that I think is the most ridiculous thing ever. I never would have. I never would have guessed this. Uh, if you watch the second episode of the making of the Mandalorian, um, they have one of the visual effects guys on there, and they ask him of all nine movies which one has the most practical effects. It's actually episode one, and they show you like the pod racing thing. Like they built the entire, like they, uh, they did right. it all miniatures. So like they, they built the pod racing thing as a miniature. And I just, I, I never, I, I assumed 95% of episode one was green screened and, and just done that way. But I was, I was blown away to find out that episode one actually has the most practical effects of any star Wars movie. But, but definitely like, here the you second and third one are, you can really tell. Oh yeah. But like when you're talking about the like practical effects, like here the comes the background and everything. Oh. You just it's so computer generated sure. almost. But uh the um Peter Jackson comes out with Lord of the Rings in what? 01, 02, 03? Wasn't yep. that it? Yep. Yep. And yep. it's like, okay, so here he comes out. His, episode one's 99. Lord of the Rings comes out 01. Or fellowship comes out 01, then you get um Attack of the Clones in 02, mm-hmm. and then he comes out in 02, and he comes out in 03, and then you get the other one in 05. Yep. Uh, but like 
the entire time you watch Lord of the Rings, all the practical effects that they used and enhanced with CGI just look a thousand times better than anything better. they did in, oh, in right. uh, because they, they took a natural, they took the, the, the natural aspect of it and then just enhanced on top of that versus just like you said, you know, just Creating. throwing everything at the wall. Exactly. Oh, uh, so I this. wish they had. I almost wish, though, they kind of like what they've done, like, like with the Bond movies. When you watch the Bond movies today with Daniel Craig's version, there's a a real art craft to it. There's like a, a seriousness taken. Uh, and uh, uh, just a they put a legit, good, solid action well acted, well directed type. And I wish they had done that with one, two, and three Star Wars because it just didn't it didn't play off well for me. But at Phantom Menace is, is probably the 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 best one of them all and then Sith and then clones. Right on. Uh looks like Wardo stepped away for a second. So we'll just jump to the newest trilogy. Uh I'm back. Oh, Wardo's back. back. Cool. Uh Wardo, your thoughts on one, two, and three. How do you feel the art goes? One was fun yep. um, because it had been, you know, 16 years since a, a Star Wars movie came out. So uh, it quenched our thirsts, so oh, yeah. to speak. Um, two was God awful. Mm -hmm. I mean, just wooden acting uh, to call it as such would be an insult to wooden actors. Um, bad script. I mean, the only redeeming quality was Yoda being a badass at the end. Uh not even for you, Mayor. All right. Uh, Man, like, he, he just he oh he just looks so ridiculous. He is so yep. he is such a B A O G Jedi that yeah. he should have just been walking into rooms and just been like, out of my way, out of my way. You're nowhere near me. Get what are you doing? Why are you <laughs> raising your sword? It's like he could probably, I feel like Yoda was so like overpowered he should have been able to look at dooku and been like your lightsaber's mine or he's not thanos your lightsaber he, off he, even though you're holding he's not thanos like, it's not that simple unfortunately but oh dude uh, he, but he should have had a lot more yeah but i don't know he just that whole like i mean i i get it i get it you're not wrong and as far as three goes it's watchable um if it came on tv depending on my mood i might watch it but it gave us the, the the setup for episode four, obviously, as far as how did Anakin become Darth Vader? Why does he hate Obi-Wan Kenobi? So sure. on and so forth. Well, so, my my biggest say, problem with three that I wish had been done differently, the, the final battle that we get between Obi-Wan and Anakin. Right. I don't understand what George Lucas was thinking in. Uh, he has two options in that fight scene. He has really super close up on his actors where you can't really see what the lightsabers are doing. You just see green and blues flying around like the screen or his other option is he goes to a super far away wide shot where it looks like tiny little stick figures and tiny little lightsabers flying. There wasn't any like good two shot action sequences in that final fight. The battle that's supposed to like come close to the duel of the fates fight like this is supposed to be like two awesome people um having this great fight to end this trilogy and i felt like it was so terrible like the entire fight scene is super close up super far away super close up super far away and i never got i never got a sense like i was actually a part of that fight <laughs> So that's my disappointment with episode three. New new trilogy. So, so we wait we wait another however many years. Lucasfilm sold. Lucas has nothing to do with seven, eight, and nine. We get JJ Abrams coming in. He it, uh, It's only him, ten years, isn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was ten years. Wow. Yeah. Um you get you get Kathleen Kennedy coming out with a, a really like and granted, I understand George Lucas did one, two, and three, and that didn't work so well. But why you would pick three different directors to try to tell one trilogy story arc and not have somebody that just, oh, like, not not having that overseen from the beginning. And, like, these are the stories you're going to tell in seven. This is the story you're going to tell in eight. And that's going to get us to nine. 
Instead, you give it to three different directors with different screenwriters, and you're just like, give us more Star Wars. I think 7, 8, and 9 are garbage. I think they don't line up as a trilogy at all. I think they're all, like, I I I have trouble saying I would rather watch 1, 2, and 3, but at least George Lucas kind of made an overall story arc for those three crappy movies. I feel like this is three disjointed, unknown, just garbage films thrown together. And that's my personal opinion of it. Jason, you I'd see agree with you that. Agree? Jason Richardson, Who are you talking to? Oh, um, I'm, you know, it was exciting when um, The Force Awakens opened, you know, kind of relaunching Star Wars. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it was not, I didn't expect it to be what my past Star Wars experience was, but just still be in Star Wars land. And I think it fulfilled that for me. Um, I'm glad that it didn't emphasize, you know, on, you know, the normal characters, you know, like the Vader and all that stuff. And, mm -hmm. and you're introduced to this new character, uh, Ray, um, who da Daisy Ridley, I think was, is awesome actually. Um, and I didn't know where it was going to go. Mm -hmm. Uh, I will say by the end of the series, the, by the third one, I kind of played in my head certain things that would play out and it didn't go that way. So I was kind of let down from that sense. But I would say by the third one, when I went to see the third one in the theater, I was sitting there before it started and I didn't feel like I was going to see Star Wars. I, I, I normally would be more hyped. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think we got too much and too little time and things weren't really spread out enough. And so it's kind of star War overkill. Um, but in the end though, they're still fun. They look good on the screen and I enjoyed them, but it's not what we really liked from the past. You know what I mean? Which they're different sure. stories though. Well, and I will say that that episode seven is probably my favorite of these three. Cause like it was something new. And I was fine with introducing Ray and introducing me some new characters, giving me Han and Chewie for like that nostalgia vibe. Um, but but why they didn't have a pre overall arcing plan in place, like even even if they didn't want JJ to do to direct all three of the movies, be like right. JJ, come, right. up, come up with three stories that create a trilogy so that we have like the framework to go with. Because it literally felt like um, Ryan Johnson, as much as I love Ryan Johnson, it felt like he came in and was just like, what did they do in the first one? I don't like any of that stuff. I'm going to rewrite everything. And then it was garbage. And then when they finally brought J.J. back, because Colin Terabo or whoever was supposed to do the third movie, once they got rid of him and decided to bring J.J. back, I think it was... What what are we gonna? How are we gonna like save this? We need to clean it up. We, we need to bring right. back the first director to see what he can do. Right, and you're not wrong. I mean, what they should have done if they were gonna go in that direction is just said, okay, J.J. Abrams is writing all the stories, but we, we'll have three different directors, so yeah. it'll still have his 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 fingerprints over all of it and make it obvious. But you know, let them tell their stories but they all have to connect. I mean, that's, right. that's the one. Like, and, and that's, and that's the beauty of what Marvel did. They said, oh, yeah. all right, here's our, here's, I mean, pardon the pun, but here's the end game. Yep. Tell your stories, get us there. They start, they gave us the end game and now it's working backwards. This, this uh, wasn't like some random, Oh, we don't know how this is going to do this. We might not make three movies. Like no matter what right. they were making three movies, oh, they absolutely. needed to have all three of them figured out before they started filming the first one. Absolutely. And the fact that they cranked them out every right. two years versus three sure. uh, yeah. with the first two trilogies, I mean, you take a year away from anything and you're compressing and pushing and things slip. And I mean, episode seven was great. It was nice. It introduced new characters. It gave us that, you know, that nice touch. Episode eight was. Eh. And episode nine was just so all over, so all over the place. It felt like to me, I mean, it felt like, how are we going to get Palpatine in there? How are we going to do it? Cause yeah. when the trailer came out, I heard, I heard that, that laugh, 
I'm like, all right, I'm all in. Mm -hmm. And it was more of a glorified cameo for him. Agreed. And I feel like they could have done a lot better with that. Like, yeah. Jason Mayer, your thoughts on seven, eight, nine. Um, I agree with you guys. Seven was really entertaining. Uh, it brought back that excitement. It totally feels like, um, uh, I feel like it takes a, a major nosedive. Like we were talking about with one, two, and three, it takes this major nosedive after seven, yeah. seven sets it all up, but eight decides we're going to turn you. We're going to do an about face. And then nine goes, wait a minute. We got to do an about face on eight. And so like, it just, I think one of the reasons why I didn't feel like you were probably going to see a uh, Star Wars movie, Jaybird, is because of the fact that it wasn't Star Wars, like, essentially. Like, they really screwed the pooch on this. How you spend so much money to buy such a wonderful property with all this endless potential that they are knocking out of the ballpark with their television show, with their cartoons. Yep. Um uh, I know a lot of people who really enjoy their the latest video game, um, Fallen Order. Fallen Not, Order yeah, yep. right. Love it. Yep. Yeah. So I know a lot of people who like that game. Um, so you're literally hitting it out of the ballpark with every aspect of this. And the rides apparently at Disney World and Disneyland are amazing. Like it's one of those things to me that's like, how did you take the easiest of the easy yep. and screw it up so bad? Oh man. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. Who knows? Maybe 10 years from now, they'll go, hey, 7, 8, 9 didn't actually happen. We're going to make the, this <laughs> gonna trilogy. Somebody yeah. had a dream. We're going to retcon it. Up, here, so. here um, we're going to... Is Luke going to wake up and say it was all a dream? <laughs> what was that? Or is is Luke gonna, is Mark Hamill going to wake up like in Dallas and say it was all just a dream? Yeah, that would be great. <laughs> well, I mean, that's the, I think that was the... To me, that was the most disappointing thing about the trilogy was that I felt disappointed in how they, where they went with Luke. Agreed. I'm thinking you've got Mark Hamill back. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this is what you come up with. And it's kind of Again, like, you, why couldn't we have ended, ended nine with like, you know, Luke is still alive. Why does Luke have to be the new Yoda? You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I just, it's like, I wanted Luke to still be there and be alive at the end, you know. And like, you I, killed, I, my, my, you killed Han Solo, mm -hmm. literally the biggest, baddest motherfucker ever. Like, shoots first in the original cut. Like, he is literally the scoundrel, awesome dude. And you gave him a death where, when it happened, I didn't, th I didn't, I saw <laughs> it coming, and I didn't care that he was dying. Like, how are you, like, I love that character. How do you kill him? And I feel absolutely nothing. Yeah. I think, no. I think at least what you, I think, um, how do I say this? It, it's one of those things where like in a scary movie or a, a murder mystery or something, um, you know, each season you got to have some kind of major drama piece in 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 a, in a story right and so it was kind of like okay so the real thrill shocker here is going we're gonna fucking kill him han solo off you know what i mean and and but you know i was just kind of like oh i wasn't i wasn't expecting that i i, I wasn't but it kind of does it made ben seem more darker kind of like the darth vader in a sense and you know, afraid of him. So I was slightly afraid of him a little bit because he's just evil. So uh, I'm, I'm going to wrap up the Star Wars talk by literally just okay. saying that I I personally wish they would have just gone to Timothy Zahn and told him that they wanted to do the Thrawn trilogy as yes, seven, eight, and nine. You have you have Luke setting up the new Jedi Academy. You've got Han and Leia with with their twins. And I mean, even if you wanted to add some stuff to it, you could still have Thawne as a as a bad guy who had nothing to do with the force, who was literally just going around and, and, and being being evil in the galaxy. I would have been much happier if they had done that. So let's move on now, because uh, we just spent 20 minutes talking about Star Wars and we have a lot of other trilogies to get to in the last Jones. three weeks on Star Wars. <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah. Indiana Jones. How do we feel about the Indiana Jones trilogy? It's not a trilogy anymore. 
it I'm going it's a quadrilogy. By, I'm it's going, out. I'm going by the three trilogy movies that matter because here's my problem. Here's my problem. So so which one does Crystal Crystal Skull take over? It it doesn't take over anything. It doesn't exist. That movie is so garbage. And why 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 why? I I just then my brain hurts thinking because about Shia LaBeouf. Because Shia LaBeouf. And swinging from the trees and all stupidity. Let's talk about the real Indiana Jones trilogy. Raiders, the first and the Temple, third one, and Crusade. First and the third one. See, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm probably one of the few people that that really likes all of them on on the same level. Like, I, I would say Raiders is probably the best, but I would still say that Last Crusade is my favorite, and it's only because of Sean Connery. Like, I love Connery and Harrison Ford so, together. So awesome. There's, there, their so chemistry great. is so good. Yes, it is. The second one, though, the second one to me is kind of like Attack of the Clones. Okay. That's the, but I like that second just, one. I thought they're all good. I, I think they're all good. Raiders is by far the best. Uh, I I I um, really enjoy the other two. Um, but one of my problems that I have, and George Lucas does this, and I want to say it started with Last Crusade more so than any other movie. How all these accidental things okay. always end up saving the hero. Sure. So they don't, they don't, it's not them being clever or smart or savvy. It's literally just by dumb luck. Oh, all of a sudden, uh, Han Solo, or not Han Solo, sorry, <laughs> Indiana Joe, Indiana Jones got Take saved that. because of that accident. That was like, and it's just uh, they did it. They did it with. It started in that. It traveled to the prequel trilogy. It went into Harry Potter land, or all the Harry Potter movies for me. Like, there's so many times where it's like, just be a little bit smarter with your writing. Just think a little bit more, because, um, yeah, to give somebody an out without them actually doing anything is just lazy writing. So, okay. Wardo, I feel like Raiders was Raiders was like a piece of artwork. Sure, it was like the just the top brand, just phenomenal, great story, adventure, had a little humor to it, some scary moments, eerie moments, and then even what's the Great Kingdom of the Crystal Skull? What's the second one called? <laughs> that's the fourth Tem one the temple of doom is the second doom. temple of doom oh my gosh okay temple of doom i like <laughs> it's just it's just a little off for me and it just uh didn't seem to have the heart and the the artiness of raiders sure but i'd still it's in my collection i like <laughs> uh, but then the crusade crusade with connery they try to come back to that more Raiders feel, in my opinion. And I and, and I like the mystery. Uh, what what I, I like the search for the Holy Grail in the third one. What about you, Wardo? I would say the first one is perfect. Um, it has just it's like throw everything you can into a really good story and just run with it. You have you have the green light. You don't have to ask for permission. Just go. Um, and it was. I mean, it was basically perfect. Second one felt more like, okay, we just made a crap ton of money. Let's see if we can do it again. Sure. Very campy. Uh, exactly. I mean, they, it was, it was, it was, there was some cheese to it. Like, so you're Good saying move. you didn't enjoy the addition of short round. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. What I am saying is it seemed like, uh, executives i mean it looked like they were looking at, at at dollar signs more than they were looking at at the film uh and saying okay you did really well you made a lot of money go do it again okay um and it, it was was it good sure was it as good as raiders no uh and then last crusade i mean like like you get like jason and jason said um uh, you throw a shot connery in anything yep. Come in. i agree um, and Harrison Ford, Harrison Ford in the second one too, just kind of looked like, uh, yeah, like I said, it just felt like he was like going he through wasn't motions. enjoying himself. Yeah, he was he was getting a check. All right, so the next trilogy, probably my all time favorite trilogy of all time. I really don't need to say much about it. Anybody who's listening to this knows how much I love this trilogy. 
I love the third one. I don't care what other people say. Back to the Future. Oh my God, we're talking about. I this think we care. Again. We talked about this a lot last week. And, and I need another beer. Like, <laughs> and we even hit the trilogy talking about that one. Oh uh, man, Back to the Future. Love the first one. Mm-hmm. Second one's okay. Third one's fine. Yeah, like there you go. It, I don't feel like show. I don't feel like it's. It doesn't drop off the cliff like some of the Star Wars trilogies. Sure, it just it just does this. It's coming in for a landing. Okay. It just keeps coming down further and further. That third one's third one's a little bit more of a steep than the other two. But uh, are we are you going to equate? It? Class. Oh yeah, first one's classic. Are you equating the third one to the Hangover Three? <laughs> it's basically oh, a money grab. When we get to the Hangover Three, pretty we're much talk about how terrible that third movie is. But I mean, at least with the at least with Back to the Future, you know that they did it back to back. Yep. They weren't the they knew that they were that that's what their plan was. Yep. Um, it was a money grab from the for the second and the third one. But I mean, it was kind of a, it was a planned trilogy from the get go. So like, well, uh, I'm not I'm not mad that they did it. It's just that I don't think they executed it well overall. Um, I appreciate the fact that by by love changing, the first one, showing the first ones to my kids, the second and third one I've never. Sorry, go. Yeah, you're, I'm just saying changing changing. From from a movie where you go back to the fifties, to then changing to a movie where you go to the future, and then back to the fifties, and then with the third one going all the way back like a hundred years earlier, like I felt like it kept all three of the movies fresh, so that even though they are kind of just carbon copies of each other, oh no, we've got to deal with Biff because this version of Biff did something bad and we need to fix it. I feel like they just changed it up enough where it didn't feel like everything was. Re- it wasn't like Die Hard One to Die Hard Two, where you're like, oh. This is Die Hard again, but now we're at an airport instead of Nakatomi Plaza. Jason Richardson, your your feelings on the trilogy? (laughs) Tell me you love all three of them. Tell me you think they're great. I like one. (laughs) Two is fine, although it's harder to watch these days, but I appreciate the effort. And I like the second half of two, part two, better than the first half. Three, I can't even, I I, I don't even think I've ever watched three completely all the way through because I just was bored out of my mind. I'll save you time. That's it. I remember watching three in theater when I was nine years old. Mm -hmm. (laughs) All right. Uh, I'll say this number, number two and number three, U.S. gross wise, didn't even gross, outgross the first one. People were like not having it. It's a cult classic. Besides, for people like me, the Cubs won the World Series finally. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's here's another one that for me, the third one just takes a nosedive. Uh, it's also one for me that the second one is better than the first one, uh, The Godfather. I really love the first movie. I think the second one ramps it up and tells a much better story. And then that third movie was, and granted, that was like a 15-year gap before they did the yep. third one. And I feel like it was for no reason at, at all. Like there, I don't feel like the third movie needed to be told. I don't hate it, but I also really don't care for it. You guys got feelings on the Godfather? Well, Godfather three to me sounds almost apocryphal because I mean, it's not even Francis Ford Coppola doing it. It's Sophia. Um, I mean, it's almost Godfather three to me is like, Dark Knight Rises. It it just it just doesn't need to be there. Oh, just yeah, leave them at the two right. stories and just go from there. I agree with that. Jaybird, you got a Godfather feeling? Um, one and two are great. They're classic movies. They're well done. Um, a little slow to watch these days. Uh, forgettable, but well crafted movies. But I, I just yeah, that's all I have to say. Jason Mayer. Um. I am going to correct you, Chris. Uh, one, two, and three are all directed by Francis Ford Coppola. Were they? I think I could have sworn that Sophia did the third one. No, she's she's that. in that movie a lot. Uh, I knew there was something to it. She's the daughter in the movie. I know. I know she's a daughter, and she totally redeemed herself with Boston Translation. Deal. But she, yeah, huh. I've been wrong before. Chalk it up. That, that I'm not going to lie. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen. The second or the third one. Oh, okay. I was so bored with the first one. 
even though I think it's a it's great to look at, it's just a whole lot of pondering, and it's very slow. It's like I don't I don't know, I, and so I I was so disinterested after the, watching the first one. I've never gone to second or the third. So. I personally highly recommend the second one. I I love it. I think it's far better than the first one. But don't ever watch the third one. You don't need to. Save your breath. So this trilogy we're about to discuss is one that I think starts off really well, takes a huge nosedive, and then kind of saves itself in the third one, and that's Jurassic Park. Oh, okay. I, I obviously I love the first one. It's 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 a it's a great movie. The second one is pure garbage, as we discussed last week. There is nothing redeemable in the second one, aside from maybe Pete Postulate's character. Uh, and then the third one, it might be because I like Sam Neill so much, uh, but but like J- like Jason was saying with with what Spielberg does, the third one also went to that. They got very lucky in in the third act that that phone call went through when it did for the military to show up at the very end. I don't think the third one's perfect, but I don't hate it as much as I hate the second one. The third um, one brought back a little. Uh, more excitement than kind of like the first one a little bit. Mm -hmm. A little bit more action to the third one. Um, I mean, nothing will ever be better than the original. And, you know, you you have to have them all in your collection, but the first one has the heart and it will always be the best. And, you, yeah. For sure. Jason, Mayor? Um, love the first one. Second one's bland. Third <laughs> one's bland. I'm yeah. Just <coughs> excuse me. Um, I I don't think the second or the third one ever needed to be made. It was an obvious cash grab. Um, yeah. The yeah. I'm not a big fan of the second or the third one. And Jaybird, I only own one, two. I do not own three because I really, really disliked it overall. So. Well, guess what? Five dollar five dollar bin. Five dollar bin at Walmart. <laughs> Seven dollars fifty cent bin. Oh, blue oh, red. My fault. Oh, you wasted two fifty. Wardo, give me your Jurassic Park feelings. One was amazing. I mean, you know. It, reading the book before the movie came out sure. it was just it was awesome i mean i was just a you know a little you know a, you know kid just going hey mm-hmm. uh two was it was okay it was nowhere near as good as the the second and honestly I, just like uh jason said about godfather two and three i never saw the third jurassic park all right uh, so one of the genres, as I was doing my research this week, one of the genres I found that seems to have a lot of trilogies is the action adventure genre. So we're going to go through some action adventure movies and see how you guys felt about the the trilogy as a whole. Uh, first one's Die Hard. I've already mentioned that I I do not like the second Die Hard at all. I feel like it's a carbon copy of what worked in the first movie, a cash grab, as you guys have said. Um, but I do really enjoy the third one. I thought Samuel L. Jackson was a great like sidekick character. I felt like they had a lot of good humor between the two of them. And I enjoy the fact that it tied back to the first movie with the Gruber brothers. What do you guys think about Die Hard? I am on the exact same path with you on that one, Shane. Nice. Uh, first one, first one's easily um the best action film of all time, I would like to say. Sure. Um, yep. As far right. as that, like an actual action film that takes place in like present day when it came out. Um, I think it's, it's, if it's not the number one, it's gotta be top three, probably. Um, fantastic movie beginning to end. Then you have two, which is, it's fine. It, it is what you said. It's cash grab. That third one's a lot more fun. Mm-hmm. It swings back up the fun direction, in my opinion. Um, Samuel L is fine. The Gruber connection's really cool. Um, but I then you know the fact that all three of them take place in a different city. We go from Los Angeles to Washington D.C. to New York. I felt like that at least gave you some variety in it. 
and it keep, like you said earlier tonight, it keeps something, it keeps it fresh somewhat. Sure. So. You got a different scenery. Jaybird, how do you feel about Die Hard? Um, I think Die Hard one through three, one through, you know, I'll give you one through four. Um, oh, they made it. It's Die probably Hard one four? of the better tr- trilogies or quad, quad, whatever. Um, I like Die Hard too. Um, I think the thing that hurt Die Hard 2 just from a, you know, I don't like Die Hard 2 Die Harder. I hate titles <laughs> like that. Yeah. It's just, Worst I would title. rather have, I would have had rather had the movie called like Die Harder rather than okay. Die Hard 2 Die Harder. You know what I mean? <laughs> it, I just think that's stupid. But I, I think that one, two, and three are all solid. One has the heart. I remember I saw number one about three weeks before it came out in Chicago on 70 millimeter screen went to this, this press junket thing with my dad and we were just blown away. Like, Oh my God, what did we just see? I mean, it was just amazing. And then like, this is going to be huge. And, and um, I saw Die Hard 2 in Chicago and I thought it was fun for um, a sequel. Um, I still watch it to this day and really like it. And I like Die Hard 3. And then is it Live Free and Die Hard, the number four with Kevin I don't know, Smith? That yep. movie didn't exist. That movie didn't happen. I we don't, we, I, we don't I acknowledge that was, it. I thought that that was okay for being a fourth. You the know, next thing, the next thing you're going to tell me is they made a fifth one, and then I'm just going to get really mad. Uh, they, they did. What was it called? I don't. Nobody cares. <laughs> Die stupid. Oh, Die. Are soft. we only talking about? Are we talking about uh, trilogies? Yes, we're talking about trilogies. Warhol, okay. Die Hard fa- thoughts. Best Christmas movie ever. Agreed. Uh, well, yep, I'll give you that. Right, I, I, get, I get, I get two, I get three thumbs and, up. All right. One and two are, are Christmas movies. Right. Uh, number two, I'm going to echo. It's an echo chamber. Chamber now. Uh, cash grab. Yep. Just, just whitewash, whitewash. Uh, Nakatomi Plaza. There you have it. Yep. Uh, number three, anything with Samuel L. Jackson, I'm watching. Agreed. Anything. Definitely agree with that. So the next the next trilogy is one that I, I'm putting in my Godfather category. Starts off good, gets better, and then takes a poop on itself. And that's the Terminator franchise. I like the first one a lot. It's a great, it's a great like set up kind of all right, cool. But that second movie I love. I think the second movie is so good, so much better than the first one. And then that third movie is so hard to watch. The only actually, you know, I, 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 the only redeeming factor I get from the third, the like Claire Danes one, the Claire Danes one. Yeah. I like, I, I like the fact that at the end, Judgment Day actually happens. Like, I, I, I appreciate the fact that they were like, this sucks, and now we're locked in this bunker, and that's the end of the movie. Uh, that's the only thing I liked about the third one. Everything leading up to that was ridiculous. I need to watch the third one again. I have literally only seen the third one. The one and only time I saw it in the theater at Clearwater, and I literally saw it after a Dave Matthews Band concert, <laughs> The Late Show. And I can't even, I just remember seeing red a lot in the movie, like okay. a computer red visual, and Claire Danes, and then the one dude named Nick something that you don't even hear from nowadays. Nick Stoll? Yeah, it makes me want to go back and just watch that, even if it is bad, just to see what it was because i can't even remember it got you Wardo? one was very good um you know the terminator great just never seen anything like that before um but two just blows it out of the water and it was just so well done well directed well written number three is forgettable yeah i mean the only reason I remember it is because I saw it in the theater and it was just, it was, it was, was it was cool. I mean, it's a Terminator movie. Is it something I would spend money to go see again? Never. Jason if Mayer? I had, a, if I, had, if I could only pick one of the two between one and two, if I would, and I could only watch one for the rest of my life, whatever, mm-hmm. I would still pick the first one over, really? over number two. Okay. Wow. That's that's interesting. Because the, the, the first one, number two is badass. It is a perfect sure. sequel. Probably one of the best sequels of all time. But the first one, you know, 
I remember I was what 11. It was at 84. Yeah. 84. Uh, okay. Yep. So yeah. So 1984, I was 11 years old. I saw Terminator, the original in theaters at the Esquire when it went to the, was a dollar, dollar and a half Heston theater off of uh, Pendleton Pike. And so that's where I saw the Terminator. So it was in its second run. Um, and, and that was scary watching that back then you were scared of Schwarzenegger. I mean, that was just creepy. And it was just, I thought a great, brilliant kind of horror thriller type movie. And then number two is just kind of a whole on a whole different level. But number one is just low budget and effective. Jason Mayer. Uh, number one, great movie. Number two is pretty, I think they're almost interchangeable as far as how good they are together. Um, I, I, they're almost on the same par for me because like Jaber just said, and we talked about last week, number one's more of a horror movie in the, in like an aliens vibe. Mm -hmm. And then Terminator two is more aliens where it's like, we're going to throw, there's a lot of action in it, but there's also a lot of talking in it too. Uh, especially if you watch the longer director's cuts, which they're good if you like the movie, but if they're, if you don't like the movie or I would never show it to somebody first. Uh, I'd want them to watch the theatrical cut because I think it's cut really well. Um, but three is literally one of like four movies I ever wanted to walk out of. Um, three, I we were watching it. I'm uh, watching it with my two older brothers and it was like opening week. I can't remember which day of the week it was. And dude, that sequence where... Arnold is holding on to that crane and it's crashing through all the buildings and he's holding on. I literally turned to my brothers and I said, can we leave? <laughs> I, I just want to go. And my brother, Michael said, yeah, I'm fine with going. And then my brother, David was like, no, we're <laughs> staying. Like, this isn't that bad. And it just kept getting worse for me. Um, I will say that I agree with you, Shane, at the end of the movie, what I thought was really cool was uh, that uh, Judgment Day still happened. Um, on a side note with that, um, before the other Terminators ever came out, they did a show called Sarah Connor Chronicles. Mm -hmm. um, what I really dug about that show um, was, and it was something they kind of set up with Terminator 3, is like Skynet was sending um, Terminators back in time to do specific like things. And like once they uh, completed their objective, they would just shut off until judgment day happened so that they would reactivate and then go after another aspect. But wow. it was like, not like it was like um, stockpiling ammunition for their guns nice. or stockpiling, like being a security in a, in a, um, in a, like a missile launch center or something like that. It was a really cool uh, aspect of, of the show and loving the first two as much as I did. Uh, I definitely recommend the first season of Sarah Connor Chronicles if you ever get the chance. So. Very cool. Uh, so the next franchise, let's stick with James Cameron for a second, is Alien. Uh, we talked about this last week, how the first film is a solid film. Second film, I feel like, is a better film. And then uh, Alien 3 was, was garbage, in my opinion. I was not a fan of it. Um <sighs> I remember, I remember hating it a lot when I originally saw it. But I remember watching it later and not hating it as much, but still not thinking it was good in any way. So much better today watching it than back then. Okay. Yes, totally, a hundred percent agree. I think like the hype of aliens mm -hmm. in your brain, getting you kind of pumped for the fact that this is a new alien movie. Uh, alien Three is a solid. I won't say it's anywhere near one or two, but it is a solid continuation of the story. And I really like um, uh, David Fincher did a really good job with the movie. Sure. And his yeah, director's right. cut is even better than like is super, super cool. I should really um, check that out. Yeah, that one, it has a lot more like it, it's I don't know. It's not extended too much, okay. but like the little bits that they add in there. Um, add a lot more to the story and it works a whole lot better i think because i won't so. lie i'm pretty sure so when i saw aliens 3 or alien 3 the first time i don't i wasn't a huge cinephile and so i did i just went into it and did not enjoy the movie 
I revisited it yep. once I once I became a David Fincher fan. And so I feel like my my second viewing, like ten years after my first one, and not not ten years, but seven or eight years after the first time I saw it, being a Fincher fan at that point, I think I was a lot more forgiving and saw a lot more things that I liked in the movie that I remembered. It's still probably the And if the, you don't have access Yeah, the, I was gonna say if you don't have access to the director's cut of it, let me know and I'll let you borrow it. Um yeah. The last I time I looked, that all of disc. all the director's cuts were on HBO, but I I don't remember how long ago that so was. Uh, so Wardo, you got any thoughts on the Alien franchise one, two, and three? I mean, Alien was very good. Aliens just it took it in a different direction, and it was for me it was more sci-fi based. Yep, um, which really appealed to me. Aliens three just. It just didn't do it for me, simply. Um, I mean, yeah. Okay. Uh, the, next, <laughs> the, next trilo- the next trilogy is one that is, is in an odd category of the first film is probably in my top ten of all time. And then it gave me two sequels that I think are two of the worst movies I've ever seen. And that's the Matrix Major. trilogy. Yep. The yep. first Matrix movie knocked it out of the park, did an amazing job. <laughs> oh my the, god. The second one, the only thing it gave me that I thought was cool was the the highway sequence. I do think that the highway sequence was cool. But at the end of the second one, you give me the guy in the computer room that tells me a whole bunch of crazy stuff, and I went, okay. For like ten minutes. Yes. Right. Yes. But you gave me a whole bunch of stuff where I was like, okay, this movie was bad. But if all the stuff this crazy guy is telling me happens in the third one, it's got to be a good movie, right? And then what happens in the third movie? Ten minutes into the third movie, he meets with the Oracle, and she says, oh, you talked to the crazy computer guy? Don't listen to anything he said. It's all lies. And I'm like, so all the cool stuff that I thought you were setting up for the third movie didn't even didn't even come close to happening. So yeah, I think Matrix 2 and 3 are two of the worst films I've ever seen. I have never forgiven them. I, I hate them with a passion. Jay Matrix. Or, go. The ma- the Matrix was amazing. Mm-hmm. Just blew everything out of the water. Oh, yeah. Nobody expected anything out of it. And it, I mean, just amazing movie. The second one was. OK, I'm. I'll watch. And like you said, you hear this guy saying, you know, ergo vis-a-vis for 20 minutes at a time. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> you're just, just, it was so bad that they had Will Ferrell parody it. I remember this <laughs> at, the, at, the, at, the, at the MTV Movie yep. Awards. And he's just sitting there and it was just god awful. And the third one, hot garbage. Yep, it did not. It did not give me a satisfying resolution to that trilogy. Richardson, I feel like deja vu. Like we've talked, <laughs> we I, have. I, uh, um, I like the first one. Second one, I love the opening of the second one. Um, I could care. I don't what remember I, what happened at the beginning of the second one? I don't either. Carrie Ann Moss kicks some ass at the beginning, I thought. Or she Didn't she jump out of a window, or is that the first one? That's the first one. That's the opening of the first one. But she, she no, kicks no, no. ass she at the beginning of the second window. one, though. She falls out the window. It's his dream. That's right. Yep. She falls out the window, and she's it's getting a good shot opening. at. It's all The highway motion. scene is uh, phenomenal. Um, I don't know. I just, you know, I love the first one. I could give a shit about the rest. I really don't care. Agreed. I'm not even excited about the fourth one because nope. of the fact that the second and third ones were horrid. Nope. I am. I think they're going to clean up some shit. And Keanu's going to be like, get this shit right. Oh, please, make, yeah. please make it Neo Wick. On like Star Wars should. Come on. Like, I, yeah. I don't hey, hey, Jason. Jason, look at me. It's Karen. <laughs> All right. He's Next more trilogy? powerful today. Next trilogy. Uh, I need you guys to give me your thoughts on the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Uh, Fellowship, yeah. Two Towers, Return of the King. Were you bored by Return of the King? Did Two Towers' battle scene hold up? 
Jason Mayer loves two towers because we've <laughs> mentioned that the last couple of weeks. The according battle him, scene. No, according to him, that's a no. No, yeah, thought you said two towers was the best. <laughs> You're not you? listening. <laughs> no, you said two Fellow- towers was no. the best of them. No, no, no. Fellowship is my favorite. Two tower. It's just a steady progression of like, it's it's a downward slope. Two t- uh, fellowships great. Two towers is good, and Return of the King is fine. Like it, it. Um, yeah, but I'm yeah, that's how I feel this about segment. Them. This segment here, <laughs> Wardo, <laughs> give me give me your Lord of the Rings thoughts. Loved every second of it. All right. It it was it was balanced. Um the fellowship was a great story told. Oh yeah. Um setting up everything in in advance because you know if you've read the books, you know that it's gonna be moving forward and the second's gonna be a little bit slower, a little bit more plotting. But at the but it feels like Peter Jackson gave gave uh movie watchers a payoff with the battle at helms deep being as epic as it was for sitting through you know what you said you know for sitting through two hours of smeagol gollum Mm -hmm. and the third one was just it tied it tied up everything in a nice neat bow and the only thing i didn't like was it deviated from the ending, you know, where uh, Mary, uh, Mary and Pippin went back to the respective kingdoms and were treated basically as princes, and uh, Sam didn't get that last boat. So right. that's the right. only that's the only red flag I had. So my only issue with the <clears throat> the last one is the fact that the endings are so long. Yeah, like yeah. I when I was watching it, I was like, okay, we're done. Oh no we're fading back in. Oh no, we're fading back in again. Like that uh the ending of Return of the King was really really long. I agree. Um did we need three John Wick movies? No. Number 1, top 5 action movie right up there with Die Hard uh and a few others. Mm-hmm. Um second one's fine. Third one gets worse. I liked Holly <laughs> Berry in it a little bit, but they uh-huh. barely put her in that movie. Yep. Um, it like it, it sounded like she was going to be a huge part of it, and then all of a sudden it's like, hey, you're in here for 20, 30 minutes, and then bye, see you later. Uh, yep. Don't need you anymore. Um, uh, I love the first one. First one's amazing. Uh, the rest of them, it, it, I, they're fine if I'm if to sit down and watch if they're on kind of thing, but I'm never going to feel like that inclination of i need to watch john wick two or three kind of like i get that inclination every now and then to be like i need to watch aliens or i need to watch terminator too like i don't get that with the john wick movies jaybird you a john wick fan um i do own all all three john wicks um there's (laughs) um, no no uh, uh uh thanksgiving black friday special Oh, there you go. Um, you know, I'll I'll go back and and watch the John Wicks again. There's just something interesting about that character that I just kind of wanted to. I, I liked seeing more of him, even though he was kind of the same. But I, you know, there's just something. I feel like there'll be another one, and it's oh, just I'm always curious. I'm always curious about John Wick. What'd sure. you say? Oh, there is John Wick Four was supposed to come out next May. It's already been pushed back another year. So, yeah, oh, we're, wow. We're getting a fourth John Wick movie in May of 2021. Yeah, and as much money as the last one made, I, that didn't surprise me. So, right. but yeah, I'm, I'm down with the, I'm down with the Wick. Wardo, Wick fan? Yes. I mean, simply put. dog, too. Right. Yeah. Don't, yeah. don't mess with, don't mess with somebody's dog. But I mean, the first one was just, uh, not unexpected. It, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It was it was unexpected, uh, a very pleasant surprise, and then it was it just the next two movies just felt like, all right, we have Keanu Reeves killing a bunch of people. Go. Yep. Yep, I agree. Uh, <laughs> the next franchise is one that is a should have stopped after one, should have never done two or three, and that is the Taken franchise. 
Absolutely. Does anybody on this no. call like taking two or three? Cool. Then we don't need to talk about that anymore. How does everybody feel about that? <laughs> I said me. Oh, I didn't hear that. Had his hand up. I can't hear oh, a raised I hand. Ignored him on purpose, Shane. <laughs> yep. Uh, well, we're just gonna say. Uh, okay, fine. Sell me on taking two and three. What? What is? Okay. What it what why? So the first one I love so much. Uh-huh. The second one, the second and third one are so freaking over the top Stupid. bad that they're 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 so bad and over the top that it's worth watching. Oh, I don't know if I can agree with that. But it's but they're not like I'm not like they're not superior movies. No. They just are they just I love Lee, Liam Neeson. I don't care what Liam Neeson is in. Uh-huh. I will watch anything with Liam Neeson. Even if if he's his daughter's been taken twelve times or his wife's been killed twelve times, it's just it's Liam Neeson. But the first one is still the best. The other oh, two yeah. are like, oh my fucking, oh, are you serious? Uh, yeah. But uh, you know, you just go with it. How, how how much stupid stuff can happen to one guy? All right. So this is John like, McClane. Yeah, but again, <laughs> like I said, they at least John Wick. I I just yeah I just. I, I, but you give me two movies. I don't. Was anybody even taken in the third one? I don't even know if anybody Fuck was it. taken. I mean, geez, I was taking Nev my butt. Oh. How many times has people tried to kill Nev Campbell? <laughs> yeah, I mean, whatever. <laughs> the new. Oh, I saw your eyebrows <laughs> raised on that one, Mayor. Because you know I'm right. <laughs> the the new Planet of the Apes trilogy. I don't care about the old one. I I'm not. I, I've only seen the first of the original Planet of the Apes movies. The new Planet of the Apes trilogy. How do you guys feel about those? I own them all and don't care. Oh, I can I can feel you on that. They're kind of forgettable in my opinion. I'll go back Bruce and watch them. I'll go back and watch them, and I think that I I think they're fine movies. I'm just it's just I get them dirt cheaps and now watch them because I want to. I'll have that wild hair one day. Sure, but I'm just kind of like I don't know, I'm move on. Go ahead, Walden. What up? First one was really good. Uh, last two, me. I, I I did really enjoy the the setup of the first one, and I really like James Franco. So like, I I did enjoy the first one probably the best out of the three of them. But like, I just didn't feel Caesar's journey. There was there was nothing emotionally involving in my opinion with Caesar. Like I. I didn't watch it cheering for him. I watched it to see what happened. Jason? There? I think I've watched one of... I know I've watched one of them. I'm not sure if I've watched two of them. I never saw the first one with Franco. Uh, um, uh, it's... it. Whatever. Uh, they're, to be completely honest, they're, they're easily forgettable for me. Sure. Um, it, it's not something that... It, yeah, I just think they're blah. Are they doing another? No. I don't think so. Did I they pull they're... that? I thought the war was the last one. Yeah, I think, well, I think I've heard that they're, somebody is rebooting it. I can't remember if it's a... If it's, it's already a... Uh... Yeah, I know, but somebody's, somebody's rebooting it again, and I can't remember exactly what I read about it. I think I think they said that it is not a fourth movie in that trilogy, that it's a new Planet of the Apes film. So... I mean, they rebooted it three times, right? Or right? made three different series. How how about Johnny Depp's Pirates of the Caribbean 1, 2, and 3? I don't care about 4 and 5. 1, 2, and 3. How do we feel about those? Just like the uh, Matrix, first one's absolutely amazing, fun, yep. beginning to end. Yep. Enjoy it. Loved it. Yep. Watched, showed it to my kids. So much fun. Yep. Loved every aspect of it. And then that second and third one, they were literally just doing a cash grab and said, just remake the first one for the second one. And then the third one, we're going to have a special effects orgy that doesn't matter what you put on screen. And we'll, and, and we'll see what one, happens. The second one tried to be Empire because at the end oh. of the second one, you give us, oh, your main character is now being taken away. And how does the third movie begin? Just like Jedi, where we've got to go save our main character. I, I, it's horrid. It's, it's bad. Stupid. It's really, really bad. I don't even remember that those aspects that you just told me because yep. I watched both of them one time uh, while it was in the theater, 
And but the first one I have watched probably 20, 30 times in my life because nice. it's so much fun. Yeah, the second one ends with with Jack Sparrow being in JV Jones' locker or whatever and gets taken That's away. Right. And then like the right, post, right. post credit scene or whatever is like all of them coming together to be like, we're gonna go save Jack in the next movie. And Barbosa is gonna be the one that leads us there, just like Billy D. Williams. Uh Jason Richardson. Pirates of the Caribbean comes out, just blows everyone away. Like, I mean, it just, I mean, everyone came in droves to the theaters. It was this big, big draw. I had no intentions of seeing it. I, I tried, I finally went to go see it and I tried to watch it and I just felt bored. And I'm like, what is everybody so excited about this movie? Why is this movie so huge? I'm bored in it. And then I couldn't get through it. Number two comes out. Don't even watch it. Number three comes out. Don't even watch it. One day, Jason the Best Buy and in the $7.50 bin, I got one popular like them so badly and i'm like what am i missing but i just kind of feel bored but i feel like maybe if i get older maybe i'll get into it and i've got the trilogy there for me waiting if i want to see it yeah you probably won't like them they're they don't <laughs> age well they're they're made for kids and they're stupid uh the next the next category is going to be specifically directed towards chris ward uh oh the jj abrams star trek trilogy Oh, I already see one head down. No, um, no, 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 no. Oh, oh, okay. I was <laughs> taking a break. Ah, gotcha. Too much thinking of pirates. Um, the first one was awesome. It was just, it was, it was a fun ride. Uh, Their ability to create the Kelvin timeline. Exactly, exactly. And Setting up the Kelvin. The freedom to do whatever they wanted in the Kelvin timeline. Exactly. And tying it back to the original series yep. with Spock. Yep. That was just a stroke of genius. Oh, yeah. Uh, it, would, it had to be either Spock or Kirk. But, uh, you know, Kirk died in generation. So that 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 couldn't happen. Sure. But tying it back with Spock. um Gave it a lot of credence to to the nerds like me that, OK, this is. This is this would be something Gene Roddenberry could could approve of, um, and the casting is amazing. Mm -hmm. The effects are amazing. The fact that they took the technology and acknowledged that yeah, this is fifty years ahead of when the show came out, sure. but we can still make it new and fresh. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, the second one, they rebooted. Wrath of Khan, which is sure. my favorite Star Trek movie. And the fact that they whitewashed Khan, Nudie, and Singh yeah. with Benedict Cumberbatch. Don't get me wrong. I love Benedict Cumberbatch. Sure. Anything he's in, I'm going to watch. But replacing Ricardo Montalban with Benedict Cumberbatch as Khan. Yeah, I agree. I did not like if, if, they, went, if they went more in uh, a Dev Patel sort of way. With that, I'm cool. I get it, but that really that really stuck in my side. Uh, and the third one was awesome for me because uh, Justin Lin directed it, sure. and um, it felt like an original series episode, if in, in, but in long form. And the fact that they even tied in Enterprise, which is yeah. by far the worst, the worst of all the the series, uh, using NX class ships, sure. Um, that was just a great that was just a great fun little ride and um it'll be interesting to see if they do the fourth one with tarantino or noah hawley but uh it'll I'm be not, bittersweet it, it, but it, i i am i'm not either but it'll be very bittersweet because uh anton yelchin passed obviously sure and um and, I, and i've seen interviews with a nobody lot of can people be, that have basically nobody wants said, to replace Chekhov. yeah Pretty much most of the cast has said once he passed away, we all lost our interest in doing another one. 
So it sounds like and, we're going to get another reboot. And fun fact, uh, Star Trek was Chris Hemsworth's U.S. film debut as uh, Captain sure. George Kirk. Yep, which was awesome. Uh, Mayor, what do you got on the Star Trek movies, the new ones? Um, first one's really good, solid. Uh, same thoughts as Wardo, like, great way to reboot that series. Second one, it was fine. Uh, you didn't need to... I felt like they just... They felt... I don't know, like, if what they were thinking but it felt like they need they it almost felt like the production people thought it was a good idea to hit the gas as fast as possible after that first one okay. whereas like they could have they could have grown with that a little bit you could have had con you could have had his alter you could have had benedict cumberbatch or whoever played that character like um you could have had them do something in two but using the pseudonym that he had been using in two right. and then like maybe build to something for the third one. Um, I don't know. It just felt like it was very forced and very quick for the second one to be like, Hey, we're going to do wrath gone. Yep. There you go. It's mm-hmm. there. Um, but uh, it, they're fine. Uh, the third one, I, I remember watching it. I remember liking aspects of it. I don't remember loving it, is, but um, yeah. I, they definitely hit it out of the ballpark with number one, and you can totally see why uh, Lucasfilm and Disney totally just like we're like we're going to go get JJ to go do Star Wars right now. Sure, like Richardson. So I love the first one. The second one was fine, and then I was surprised you even brought it up because I'm like, oh shit, there was a third one. I forgot mm-hmm. about the third. One. Mm-hmm. What was um, the uh, what was the tagline on the third one? It was Star Trek. Star Trek yeah. Beyond. Beyond. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I just I just forgot about it. So, and I guess that uh, what did that come out in fifteen? Yeah. Wow, oh, five years. The th- the last one. I mean, Jesus. No, yeah. The third one's kind of forgettable, but that first one, man, was just like. Oh, they tapped into something. You know what I mean? First one just so much uh, I will say they would totally did the George Lucas thing though. The accidental. We're gonna put Kirk on this accident this oh, this sure. ice planet. Yep. He just happens to run into the one guy who can <laughs> transport somebody while warp speeding. Like, yeah, it, it, like right. it, there was a whole lot of like, oh come on, just be a little bit smarter in your writing, please. Uh, but for did the most part, JJ didn't do the third one, right? No, Justin no. Lin did the third one. Oh, that's right, because he was doing Star Wars. Yeah. Right. Uh, okay. And my only problem with the second one, like, I I, I, I really like um, the actor that plays the Admiral that was RoboCop. Um, Peter, Peter Weller. Weller. Peter Weller. I love Peter Weller as an actor. Thought he was great as an Admiral in Starfleet. And then from the first minute, he was on screen talking to Kirk. I felt like, yeah, you're the bad guy. You're you're behind this. Like it's yep. that same plot twist of the guy that's sending you on this mission is sending you because he's he's setting you up. And I was just like, like Khan. I I didn't like how they handled Khan because in in the original series in the movie, like Khan didn't give a shit about anybody. Khan wanted to do what Khan wanted to do. He didn't have some admiral blackmailing him into doing stuff. Like, Khan would have figured out some way to... I mean, when Khan murders Peter Weller, that's beautiful. Like, that's the Khan that I wanted for the whole movie. Like, right. not somebody who answered to, to Peter Weller throughout the movie. So I just... I wasn't... I wasn't... A, as I do like the movie, but I didn't like how they handled Khan's character in that. Khan uh, is supposed to be... Khan's supposed to be a cold-hearted, ruthless badass, yep. and they... They basically gave him a vasectomy. Yep. I was going to say they neutered him. Yep. All right. So that was my action adventure category for us to talk about. The next one that seems to do trilogies a lot is comic book movies. Oh, God. Yeah. So we got a lot. Of, we got a lot. <laughs> Why do you avoid horror movies? Because he knows what people watch. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, cool. All right, so we'll divert real quick. Let's talk about Scream. Scream 1's amazing. Scream 2 is really good as a sequel. 
And then yeah. Scream 3 had to deal with the fallout from Columbine and Miramax being afraid of an actual horror movie, and they turned it into a horror comedy. They played it smart. They knew where their money was. And that I was mean, that's, really that's it in a nutshell. Yeah. That's uh, it in a nutshell. Uh, number three is for number three is forgettable. Like I'd is. have to go. Like I could not even tell you what happens in number three, and I have to go back and and watch it. I can barely remember all of two. Uh, two, two. I really enjoyed. Uh, the, I, I enjoyed two, but I kind of it does not hold to the first one, which I know inside out. Sure. the the th- the The only redeeming factor in three for me is reconnecting it to the first movie. And making you realize that all of the shit that happened in the third movie was because of her stepbrother setting it all up. If you don't remember her stepbrother's the killer in the third one, he's the yeah, director. Thanks for giving the plot away. I mean, if you're if you're watching this and you haven't seen Scream Two in twenty years, I forgot Scream, about it though. You know what I well, mean? I'm trying like... to remind you. But her brother, <laughs> her brother went and set everything up with Billy and Stu. That's the only yeah. like, redeeming thing about it because the rest of the killings in the movie are pretty lame and they're mostly comedic and it's not very graphically violent. It's a lot more like scare tactics that don't pay off. Um, and then you throw in Jay and Silent Bob because you need some more comedy in the movie. Like the, the you know what one it, was depressing. An interesting thing I think they could have done with the screen movies as much as you kind of like the characters and such. Yeah. Was just make it a different screen movie each time. Sure. And then it then it doesn't because by the time you get to like by the time you get to the third one, usually you're kind of like it just goes in a real fucking tangent. And years go by and you're like, how can we branch off of this and you know and tie this together? You know, sure. and, and it they go in some weird direction and you're just like Oh, could we just go back to the simpleness of the first one, you know? Um, I, but I still like all the screams. Jason, and, Bader, how, what's your Scream trilogy feelings? Uh, number one's amazing. Number two's just blah. I love the beginning of that, that one. I mean, number two's, number two's really good, actually. Um, but I feel like... Number three definitely drops off a cliff for me as far as quality. Um, number, but yeah, number one and two are very solid films. Um, getting to end for me, so Wardo, first one's awesome. Um, I'm not a big slasher horror movie guy, but it was fun. Um, number two, it was like they took a couple of steps back dealing with everything that happened from the first one and. <laughs> The story told there and then the third one was just it was camp i can see that for sure dude uh, that the, when they made fun of that movie in a scary movie and they uh, were like yeah. where they were like a bunch of white people are dead we're out of here <laughs> <laughs> you know you know when you get you know when ghostface gets parodied sure. you, you, you jump the shark so, Jason Richardson, I know this is your favorite horror franchise. This was a question that was asked of me this week. Um, what do I consider the real Halloween trilogy to be? And I believe my answer is Halloween 1 and Halloween 2, followed by Halloween H2O. My logic behind this is Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, is basically a standalone film. And then when you get to Halloween 4, 5, and 6, that's actually a trilogy about uh, Laurie Strode's niece, uh, Jamie, whatever, Jamie Lloyd. Her daughter. Is it her daughter? I thought it was her niece. That's it's Laurie daughter. Strode's it's daughter. daughter. Oh, okay. So yeah, so 4, 5, and 6 are kind of their own trilogy for the Jamie Lloyd trilogy. And then the next one we get is, is H2O, which gives us Jamie Lee Curtis again. So I feel like Halloween's 1, 2, and H2O... Are, are my true Halloween trilogy. And and I will say that I love H2O. I think H2O is a great horror film. Obviously, Halloween is the best horror film that's ever been made. Uh, and I'm a fan of 2. I don't love 2, but but 2 is good for what it is. So when, 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 when I was asked what my real Halloween trilogy was, I said 1, 2, and H2O. 
And then the second Halloween trilogy is four, five, and six, which even then, six does a good job because six brings back in the cult that was in Season of the Witch. So they found a way to tie the third movie into the sixth one. And now we're talking about franchises and trilogies. So let's go back to... Let's go back to... The true Halloween trilogy. Halloween 1, 2, and H2. Let's just... Yep. All right. Um, I, I, I love all the Halloween movies for their for just what they are. And I love Michael Myers. Yep. Michael Myers, you could sit him in a damn flower shop and I would sit there and pay for it all day. <laughs> um, because I got over my, my fear of Michael Myers. And the first one was so had such an impact on my life and I was scarred for years. It wasn't until I got into college that I finally was able to break through the fear of Michael Myers. All right. So that's what made Halloween my all time favorite movie because it was that effective and looking back at it with such a low budget, they just did a brilliant job for what they had to work with. And how old were you um, the first time you saw it? Uh, I was, that was 1978. I was five. five and we saw that yeah. the Glendale one through three. Um, and so I, I want to ask you a question. Yep. I was excited when they brought H2O out. Yep. I liked H2O. Um, but like, why did people like that so much? Uh, it was right on the, it was right on the heels of Scream. And I know what you did last summer because Scream was 96. I know what you did last summer was 97. And then H2O was 98. So it was the resurgence of the horror genre, and I believe it did so well because people people appreciated its connection back to the original Halloween. It's not. I was going to say. It, Go ahead. I was going to say it definitely was, and it, it it exposed the Halloween movies to a whole new generation by coming out in '98. Yep. So. I kind of felt like, like again, I I liked how I liked H two O. Hang on a second, I'm. Are you good? Okay. Um, I liked H two O. I just kind of feel that there was, um, I don't know. It just it it didn't really tap back into Halloween for me. I just kind of felt like it was so many years later and. They just kind of picked up. I didn't feel like there was really the eeriness to it and whatnot, but I still really liked it. It just, you know, again, what Jane, uh, Shane was saying, kind of playing off of I Know What You Did Last Summer and Scream, it did feel that tone to me. Yep. It, uh, it was, I feel like they did a good job of, of paying homage to the original because if you watch the original, it's a pretty slow burn movie. Like, the first hour of that movie is is not a lot of Michael Myers. It's a lot of character development, and H2O is the same way. You're getting the Josh Hartnett character development. You're getting Laurie and, and um, uh, the guy that plays her boyfriend in that movie. Uh, you're, you're getting their character development, and then, like, you've got intermittent scenes of Michael Myers before he shows up, and then all hell breaks loose. But no, if you think about even with the the first Halloween, and if you really look and break it down, it's not that you have to have Michael Myers on screen the 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 whole time or him slashing up people. I mean, you start off the movie where you got this little boy who just kills his sister. Oh, uh, spoiler! No <laughs> who had a, it? Was like who just farted? Um. Who kills his sister, this little boy, yep. and you know, for no apparent reason, and that just that's frightening alone. To here you've got Donald Pleasant, who is creepy himself. <laughs> he was he was so good as that character that he felt creepy. And then them talking about Michael, and then you know, Michael lurking in the bushes, you know, with the, the girls walking, and then Jamie Lee Curtis looking out her window. And the guy's creeping out by the the, the blowing sheets in the wind. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I mean, that was all part of it. That was creepy. It didn't just have to do with the night scenes and him slashing people and stuff. I think it was uh, just everything combined, just the creepiness of that movie, even the daylight scenes. 
I agree with all that. War- Wardo? Halloween is an amazing movie. Halloween 2. It's been years since I've seen it, so I really it's I really can't hospital. speak. It's yeah, that's right. The same night. Right. God, it's been years since I've seen that one. And then Halloween H2O, which it just felt like it was the natural conclusion. Uh, bringing Jamie Lee Curtis back. Sure. God, I haven't seen that movie in, what, 10 years? Like really, I'd be out of turn speaking about it. Mayor, what's your what's your do, Mayor? How do you feel about that being considered a trilogy for Halloween? Uh, I, I'm fine with it. I, I um, from what I remember, I, I don't think I've seen three since I was probably like eight, maybe. Okay. Uh, so so discounting that because of the fact that Michael Myers doesn't have anything to do with it for the most part um, is totally fine. Um, uh, I love Halloween one. I, I, to be completely honest, I, I forget that there was any other ones besides Halloween. Number one, for the most part, I love the first one. The second one, I think I've seen it once all the way through. Gotcha. Um, and then the third or uh, then H2O I saw when it was in the theaters, but I don't think I've watched it since. So cool. So, uh, I mean, like Urban Legend only had two movies, The Blair Witch Project only had two movies. Uh, one too many. You did last summer only had two movies. What Friday the like, 13th had three. Friday the 13th had nine. Well, I mean, we had a trilogy. At least are we, are we including Jason versus Freddy? I, I guess, yeah. I mean, that's I think I think that's why I like that's a lot of my problems. <sighs> I, I, I'm pretty sure in the future one of these episodes is going to be called Franchises. And we're going to do franchises like uh, the entire 10 Star Trek movies, the Bond franchise, Mission Impossible is up to six movies now, Fast and the Furious is at like nine movies now. Like Those are all their own podcasts at this point. They all, that's Yeah, like those are, those are the ones that we could have huge discussions about and Friday the 13th and A Nightmare on Elm Street are in that category also. Like, if you want to just look at the first three Friday the 13th, or I'm sorry, uh, well, yeah, first three Friday the 13th, we have Jason's mother, and then we have a uh, a literal repeat of the first movie, but Jason's the killer this time, and he's thwarted by somebody dressing up as his mother. And then we've got the third movie, where he goes back to the exact same place, and Jason's back again with 3D effects. Like, number three by far. Is probably my favorite Friday the Thirteenth. Is it really? Oh my gosh! Yes. All right. Well, then let's, oh, look, yeah. then let's look at a Nightmare on Elm Street. You've got the first one that's phenomenal, and then you've got the second one, uh, Dream Awful. World. Dr- Wait, what's that? Um, a Nightmare on Elm Street two, and then three is Dream Warriors. Three is and Dream three- Warriors. So Dream Warriors was good. Two. Yes, was it not. was. Uh, but so like, yeah, like I, I, they're just not really that discernible. Of, like when you get when you get a franchise like that, they just all kind of blend together, in my opinion. Yeah, but 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 see what happened too again with Nightmare on Elm Street. It's like you, you get that bad sequel, the second one, right? Yep. Then they make up for it for the third one, for sure. Like, and then sometimes the third with, one they'll come back and they'll clean up. Starting with number four, they basically turn Freddy Krueger into a stand-up comedian, right? And then it's pretty much garbage after that. Uh, so Welcome what, to prime time, bitch. <laughs> give, give, give me another horror franchise. I uh, uh, Jeepers Creepers, I guess, has three, but I've never seen the third one. Uh, I've never seen the third one either. Yeah, uh, I actually like, really enjoy. As far as that trilogy goes, uh, I haven't seen the third one, so I can't comment on that one. Okay. First one, dude. That first one's super, super creepy. Yeah, and really crazy. Um, I thought the second one. At least they didn't just remake the first one. Sure. They turned it, uh, they, they kind of flipped it and went with, like, because doesn't the second one take place on the same night the first one does? I believe it does. And yes. it's, the, it's like the other people he's messing with that are not the brother and sister. Yes. I so, believe like, it's, it's the football um, team. Yeah. And, like, I thought that was, like, a, that's kind of a cool way to flip it on itself so that you're not just watching the same movie. Um, I haven't watched Jeepers Creepers 3, though. Oh, yeah. Although it is in my queue on Netflix. 
Oh, it's on Netflix? That's good to know. Maybe I'll actually watch it. Yeah. Uh, I'm waiting for Jason Richardson to come back so I can mention my next horror franchise. I'm right here. I'm hey, here. so what about The Human Centipede? How'd you feel about those three films? No, I, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Uh, all right, man. Throw wow. me another horror. Throw me another horror franchise. Um, uh, Hellraiser. I guess there was three of those. I've only ever seen the first one. Oh, Chucky. The, Chucky Leprechaun. Oh, Leprechaun had three movies. They're all terrible. Hellraiser two is so bad, but yes. it came with Hellraiser one in my bonus package from the five dollar bin. Um, thank God that's not a drinking game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude. In the future, that, that could be an entire game. episode. Well, here, here you go, and this is just proof. This is proof I'm not lying. I went to Walmart today. What did I get in the five dollar bin at Walmart today? I got Made Manhattan and the Wedding Planner. Oh, all right, a J Lo, a J Lo five dollar, huh? Yeah, two for two, yes. But I really only got this one because I already had made Manhattan because it came in another J-Lo double pack mm. for $5. Mm. But I wanted the wedding planner, so I figured, you if know. There, the truth was, comes oozing was, out. If there was three movies on there, it could be justifiably the J-Lo trilogy, but it's not. There is a J-Lo trilogy one, and Chris and Jenny got that for last Christmas. I kid you not. <laughs> All right. Cool. I feel like we've hit a bunch of stupid stuff in the horror franchise. Are you happy, Jason? I am very, very, very happy, so. All right. Will you talk comic book movies with us now? Okay. All right? Because we got, <laughs> we got a whole bunch of comic book trilogies to look at here. I kind of feel like we've already talked about them tonight, but we haven't, actually. We haven't. Uh, All right. I'm bringing up the first one. The oh, Go for it. Yeah, go, go, go. Sam Raimi Spider Man trilogy. All right, uh, good. Four, for, great first movie. Great Second first movie, movie kicks it up a notch. Yep. That third movie just a big old pile of steam. Was poop. garbage. Yep, I I would put that in my in my Terminator yep. franchise or Terminator category. Uh, so, anybody feel any different about that? I thought Spider Man. I thought three was fine. What? What? No. Are you high? Do you, do you <laughs> did you watch the movie? Yeah, that's where he you... turned black, right? Yeah, well, sort of. Yeah, he doesn't turn black. I Don't. Mean... <laughs> it's it, it's still Tobey Maguire. He has. Right. So when he's walking on, the when he's, suit. when he's walking down the street dancing around like a fool, and when no. he dances in the restaurant and literally like goes flat and then like goes back, uh, no, no. 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 But when no. you look at when you look at Spider Man three compared to a lot of other comic book movies and where they ended up by their third one. I mean, it's not the worst of... Okay, you know what? I'll okay, agree, you're not... I'll agree with that. It's better than Thor the Dark World. Yeah, yes. Yes, but but we can, we can go to the original X-Men franchise. X1's right. good. X2 is better. And X3, the last... Sta or X-Men 3, the last stand, whatever they call it, is absolute garbage, and I will, I will, I will tell you, Spider-Man Three. I'd rather watch that. I would agree. I still want. No. I still want X. I still, I still enjoyed X Three. Nothing near like X Two and X One, oh. but I still thought X Three was okay. X Three was oh. just dumb. Yeah. Let's kill. There's been, there have been. There is no good way to tell. Worse. There have been you're, worse movies. You're not wrong, but there are better. There is no good way to tell the Phoenix Saga, and they've done it twice and failed twice. And failed twice. Yep, and that sucks. How they're going to bring the Shi'ar Empire into like, like, eh, who knows if they'll ever actually do that right? But uh, you could do that in the MCU. You could in the but MCU. You, could... you can, but you can't do it with Fox Marvel. No, no, no. But like, if you brought the Shi'ar Empire into like. The Guardians of the Galaxy and just oh, started peppering. Okay, okay. okay. A go, go more Marvel cosmic. Movie. So easy. So cosmic. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. I can see that now. All right. Uh, so uh, I said one is good, two is better, three sucks. How do you guys feel about X Men like that, Jason Mayer? Same, the same way. Got you, Richardson. One, two, three. Cool. Wardo. Two, one, three. Two, one, three. All right. Cool. Now what about the what about the reboot first class versions? We had first class, days of forgettable Future past, and what? apocalypse. 
What's the one where this is one of the series where like I like really are they up to that many at this point? But what's the one where there there's a moment where they're freezing time and they're spinning around? Oh, that's there's first class. Oh no, you're right. Yeah, that's first. Yeah, that's class. first class where, really where Jim like Crouch is. Okay, Days of Future Past was fun because it reset everything. It didn't have you know. Patrick Stewart or McKellen, they put it back in McAvoy and Fassbender. And it was it was great. It was enjoyable. It brought it back to before last stand. So um, how many, how many were how many are you can and pick back up where you're about to start? Go. How many are were there after when it started the whole new trend? The okay, whole so how many you had first class, first class was followed by days of future past. Which was okay. followed by Apocalypse, which was followed by Dark Phoenix. So I still to this day have not seen Apocalypse or Dark Phoenix. Apocalypse is one of the worst movies you will ever watch. There is literally nothing redeeming in that movie. The entire story is stupid. Uh, the entire plot, uh, everything that happens in Apocalypse is is beyond moronic. I, I, I the the interesting thing about Apocalypse to me. Is it literally feels like a 1990s movie okay. on the quality of it, of what we would expect a 1990s like comic book movie to be? Like okay. it, it reverted to what we all were like comic books. Like you, you don't make good comic book movies. Like besides yeah. like Batman, it was and Superman are like the only ones you got to make. It was 1990s in every sense of the word. The setting, the quality of the movie, it was it was hot garbage. Um, like, I mean, the one the one thing it had going for it was Olivia Munn as Psylocke, and that's whoa. literally 90 seconds of the movie. And, and then what about that? Well, go ahead. I was just going to say, it's, oh. it's not worth your time or it's not worth watching. That uh, That is a very sad trilogy there. Okay. So how about how about Blade? The the actual comic book movie that rebooted comic book movies, the first one's phenomenal. I hate the second one, but I love Blade Trinity specifically for Hannibal King. I think Ryan Reynolds knocks it out of the park in that movie. He was Deadpool before he was Deadpool. He was simple as exactly. that. I mean, yeah, but I mean, like, dude, that movie. You're literally saying the only good like you love it because of Ryan Reynolds, yep. except for literally the only good thing about that movie. Yeah. Oh, but he at least carried it. And but I mean I'm sorry, I hate I hate the whole plot of the second one. I hate Ron Perlman in the second one. I think the I I think at least the third one had a plot of we're gonna try to bring Dracula back, whether or not it was executed well. I mean it's still I liked Parker Posey. I liked Triple H or whatever that wrestler was in the movie, like I at least felt like it had a plot and, and something going on. Whereas the second one was uh, vampires teaming up with Blade for stupidity reasons. Not a, not 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 a fan of Blade Two at all. What about Iron Man One through Three? Uh, you're jumping ahead of me. I got I got I got one thing before we get to Marvel. Uh, oh, with, that's Marvel. Yeah, that's we're, we're, we're gonna hit the Marvel trilogies in a second. Uh, the original Batman trilogy, minus Batman for, and Robin, and then the Nolan Batman trilogy. I see Jason, a head shake. I was gonna say, I see Jason's head shaking. What are you shaking your head about? Batman Forever. Uh, Batman, Batman, Batman Returns, Batman and Robin. Uh, it just keeps getting worse. Um, oh yeah, I yeah. There's nothing redeemable for me about Batman and Robin at all. Uh, Batman and Robin. Uh, or no, it's Batman one. Forever. Batman Forever. Sorry, Batman Forever. Which Tommy Lee Jones Batman and Jim Carrey. Uh, the time. only redeeming fact, the redeeming fact in uh, Batman Forever was Jim Carrey being slapstick, funny Jim Carrey. Yep. Worked for me when he was the Riddler. Um, but but everything else about the entire movie was absolute crap. The soundtrack was decent, though. I remember sure. enjoying the soundtrack. Jason Richardson, so. the original Batman trilogy, Batman, Batman Returns, Batman Forever. How do you feel about you got them all? You got all four of them for five dollars in the five dollar bin. 
Um, no, I got the, I got the all one, two, three, and four for like twenty bucks or something. Uh, okay. Five dollar bid. <laughs> Five dollar bid. They came together though. I think that was an Amazon. Gotcha. Um, oh. Yeah, I. You know, I I love the first one. Who didn't love the first? Like the first one. That the second one. Good. The second one was okay, but the second one's turned into like a cult hit. And I had to actually go back and rewatch that. I did like Michelle Pfeiffer as as back woman or whatever, or Catwoman. Um, sure. um, and then the third one kind of w- <laughs> was a little cut co- was co- the most colorful. It had the most humor. And it was the most colorful. It was the more the more comic-y, booky looking type. And then you know Jim Carrey added a, a layer of of comedy to it. Um, but then again. All those movies, you just had too many fucking villains in one movie. Yep. I mean, it happened in Batman Forever. Uh, it happened in the the second Batman. But I still, yeah. at the end of the day, liked. I liked them all, but just for different reasons. Um, but nothing is better than the first one of that trilogy. Sure. And Wardo, your thoughts? Uh, Batman 89, you know, set the stage. It was yep. amazing. Tim Burton hit a home run uh prince on the music i mean come on now you yep. know when, when you have prince doing the entire not just the soundtrack but it just it was jack nicholson it was just lightning in a bottle and i said it last week they really messed up by going rogues gallery style on the second and the third mm-hmm. and it came back to bite him in the butt because it was more about the villains than it was about uh, the protagonist and were they fun? Were they, were they something I would watch? Yes. Are they something I would watch now? No. <laughs> Hi, Jason. We're, we're watching Jason kill flies. So uh, the, the Nolan trilogy, uh, the first one's a good setup in my opinion. Second one, far superior to everything else. And the third one is a complete piece of garbage because Christopher Nolan didn't get a make the third movie he wanted to make. Um, he's come out and said that he always planned to bring the Joker into the third movie as a as another subplot and backstory to the third movie. And after Heath Ledger's passing, he realized, obviously, I'm not going to recast the Joker. Uh, so he was not able to make the third movie he planned on. And I feel like he gave no cares at all about that third movie. He phoned it in and it was just completely garbage. Anybody in here like the third movie? I like the third one. I mean, I love it, but I thought, you know, I mean, it is what it is. I think, I think sometimes when you come off of the previous film and as um, high of a, um, you know, as, as well liked as, as, as the second one was, I don't think you could have ever done better than that second one. Sure. Even if Ledger was back for the third one, I don't think you could have gotten what you got out of the second one. So no matter what, people would have been disappointed with the the third one. That's always possible. Um, That's one way to look at it. Jason, I, I, I totally, you know, it's kind of like, again, going back to Empire. Everyone loved Empire when he got to Jedi. And Empire didn't have the Ewoks and the, the little kitty appeal and such. It, it was the dark space. Sure. And that's where Dark Knight fell. It was it was the darkest of all three, in, yep. in my opinion. Um, so I thought Dark Knight Rises was was fine. Mayor, uh, I I think he probably could have hit it out of the ballpark with Heath Ledger for the second, the third movie. Just knowing how good of a filmmaker Christopher Nolan is, that's just my personal opinion. Like his. His Batman Begins, yeah, it's just a setup. Dark Knight is one of the best movies of all time. Um, even transcends being a comic book movie for me. Um, like it, it, it literally could be argued to be one of the best ever. And but that third one um, is crap. But I think he might have gotten lightning in a bottle twice if he could have had that opportunity. Just knowing what kind of just the kind of filmmaker he is and the stuff that he likes to do. Uh, he probably almost, he probably had the third one almost completely like Mapped plotted out. 
Well, yeah, like he yeah. probably had that all ready to go when he was making the second one. So um, we'll never know. It sucks. Yep. I always talked about the fact that you could have, you could have gotten Joseph Gordon-Levitt to play that Joker. And I think he would have been the only person who could have gotten close to doing Heath Ledger's Joker uh, that wasn't Heath Ledger. So I think that would have been interesting. It all comes back to 10 things I hate about you. Huh. 1999. Yeah, there we go. Wardo? I mean, I'm, it's pretty much piggybacking at this point. It's, oh. it's, um, the first one was, was good. Uh, great setup story, a different take on it, uh, as to why he was so dark and so brooding and it had Liam Neeson in it, which meant that it was going to be a good movie to me, at least. Um, the second one, like Jason said, it transcends genre. It's not a comic book movie. It's a damned good movie. Yep. Simple as that. Um, the third one had Heath Ledger. If he was still here to this day, um, it'd be a much different movie, but it was at that point. It was just like, okay, I've got Warner brothers. F you money. Let's go. Yep. All right. Let's move into, let's move into the three Marvel trilogies that we've got. Well, I guess I guess technically there's four. I didn't I didn't write down the Avengers ones as a trilogy. Uh, I did the actual characterized trilogies. But so we've got Iron Man one, two, and three. Uh, where I feel like Iron Man one was a very good setup story, and an overall decent story. Uh, two, my my only redeeming factor is Whiplash. I really think that Mickey Rourke was amazing, and you've got the suitcase armor in it. And then three is just complete trash with the fake Mandarin. Uh, and I love Shane Black. And I literally can look at Iron Man 3 and see everything that Shane Black does in every single movie that Shane Black writes. It's Shane Black's dialogue. It's the it's the kid in adult situations. It's Christmas time. Like, Shane Black's name's all over that third movie, and I still think it's garbage. But so, so, many people, so many people like the Iron Man 3, don't they? I I don't know. I don't. <laughs> I'm right there. With I, Iron Man three. I think it. I think that was the biggest of all three of them too. It was. Well, I had the, it, it was right. It, yeah, money wise, it was because it was right in the Avengers uh, wave. Yeah. I think that. I mean, I like the Iron Man movies. Um, I, I don't have them fully memorized like Jason Mayer does. <laughs> um, but but I mean they're they're forgettable, but they're good. And I could go back and watch them and then be like, oh yeah, you know, like they're things I forget. I a lot of times with, with sci-fi comic stuff like that, I will it gets too technical for me. There's too gotcha. much shit going on and it loses me where I just forget it. But then when I go back and watch it, I like it. But it's just I can't remember a lot of the technical stuff, and I don't read any of the comic books and stuff like that. But there is a point in all those movies where, like, it seems like they get, and I'm gonna really emphasize, put my word here, fucking long. I mean, like <laughs> those movies just get longer and longer and longer. And there's a point in each one of those movies where there's a good fucking 10, 15 minutes where you're just fucking bored out your mind. Hmm. Okay. You know what? It, now, it, is that the truth or I'd not? Agree. Okay. I'd agree. Uh, I, I'd agree point, with that where, too. Where, where you're just yeah. like, okay, this is the point where I can go take a piss at the bathroom. You know gotcha. what I mean? Like, As long as you come back and you don't <laughs> just like go. <laughs> then, then, you, then, you, then you come back, then you come back and you're like, Holy shit, Scarlett Johansson's dead? What? <laughs> Not in Iron Man. Spoiler. But in the Avengers, yeah. Sure. I, I missed Bayer? I missed Scarlett Johansson's death in the Avengers. Oops. Damn, Shane just cut my ass off. <laughs> I thought you were done. My fault. Jason Mayer, your Iron Man feelings. Hey, I mean, yeah. Same things that you guys said. One's great. Two is fine. Three is... Uh, um. I, yeah, I'm, that's where I would. Go, that's what how it rolls. Um, Robert Downey Jr. and Tony Stark are pretty. Seem like they're pretty much the exact same person. 
Yep. Um, so I don't know how much acting he's actually doing when he plays that role. Um, but um, yeah, I it's fine. Uh, the third one's fine, but and I definitely enjoy the first one the most out of the three. Yep. And Wardo, anything else to add? First one, I mean, that's the cornerstone. Yep. I mean, there is no Marvel Cinematic Universe without it, without Iron Man being successful. Sure. Uh, Iron Man 2, great. it was a good story. Not a great story, but a good story uh, brought Whiplash in. Uh, you got to see the suitcase armor. I got to see him racing historic F1 cars in Monaco. Oh, sure. Yep. yep. Uh, number three, I... I I, I'm going to disagree with the both of you. I'm going to say I liked it because okay. he had to deal with PTSD. Um, he was okay. the one that, you know, at the end of Avengers, he's the one that took the missile and was willing to make the ultimate sacrifice sure. um, against the Chitauri. We've never heard that story. Sorry. Shut up. But but I mean, he's the one that had to make, he was willing to make the ultimate sacrifice and he was dealing with the ramifications mentally of, Oh crap. What if it really happened? What if it really happened? And he was a broken hero and it was a story of redemption. Totally. I- it actually, it actually feels like it's been forever since the original Iron Man. It's been 12 years. It's been 12 years. Yeah, it's been a while. I mean, it, it seems like it's been a fucking long time now. Uh, so yeah. what 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 I would consider the best Marvel trilogy is the Captain America trilogy, because I absolutely love the first one. I love it being set in the forties. I love all of the Civil War. Or not, so I'm sorry. I love all of the World War II stuff in it. I loved the Red Skull. I thought he was probably the best villain that Marvel has ever put on screen. Um, I know a lot of people love Winter Soldier. I think Winter Soldier's good. Um, but I, I, I still love the first one more than Winter Soldier. Uh, Winter Soldier was very political, and I think that's why I, a lot of people like it. Uh, but then even with Civil War, I thought Civil War was a lot of fun and a very, they, they evolved Captain America's character. Granted, it's like a pre-Avengers, or like, it's like a mini Avengers movie because of its cast, but the Steve Rogers story arc in that movie, I feel like they did a good job of him questioning everything he'd done in the first two movies and Avengers. Uh, Wardo, what's, so your, what's the, your Captain America? The, so what, what, are the ti- what are the titles again? It's the first Avenger is the first one that's set in 1940s. Then you've yeah. got... Uh, um, Winter uh, Soldier, then Winter Civil Soldier. War. Yep. Winter okay. Soldier introduces uh, Bucky Barnes as the Winter Soldier. Uh, and has the uh, um, the Robert Redford uh, Hydra infiltrated uh, Shield Shield, uh, yep. and then you and then it it ends with Civil War, where you've then got the assassination attempt on uh, T'Chaka, and then the whole chasing down of the Winter Soldier. The first Avenger was really good. Like you said, it was period specific. It was set in the World War II. Uh, it showed how Steve Rogers became this, went from this little guy from Brooklyn to being, you know, super soldier. Um, and it showed the heartbreak of him losing his best friend. And he thought that he was gone and him making the ultimate sacrifice going in the ice. But Winter Soldier. I mean, it looked like it was a Tom Clancy thriller put to screen oh, to me. I'll give you that. I yeah. mean, it was it had it had the the socio political uh, tie ins, not just not, and it was it was a great thriller uh, because it just all these moving parts and the fact that they they name dropped, you know, little things like uh, when. Uh, um, What's his face? Uh, Sitwell was being held up on the wall, on the on the roof, and he's talking about all these people that you hadn't heard yet, like Stephen Strange, and we have to kill these people. And you're just like, wait a minute, did he just say Stephen Strange? They're just throwing little little nuggets for you for for years down the road. Yeah. I love that, and um, to me, that was the best the best Captain America movie because to me, Civil War just looked like Avengers 2.5. I'll give you that for sure. 
the only th- the great thing that I liked about it is that they introduced new characters and you know you see like you said you see T'Challa uh, and you see Spider Man show up and you know that they're again throwing more nuggets down the road. They used to me that it seemed like they used Captain America as a vehicle to further the franchise versus tell a story based on the the principal character. Sure. Uh, Mayor, what are your thoughts on Captain America's three movies? Um, definitely the best of the definitely best trilogy out of like single shot movies. Yeah. Um, I totally agree with the second one. It is very political. Um, it really fit what we were going through at that time, and I still think it kind of fits what we're going through now uh, from a political standpoint. Um, I I love the fact that they they decided to get a little bit more political with it. That's something that I wasn't expecting them to do, but I was really happy that they did. Um, and um, the third one, yeah, uh, third one's great in its own aspect. My only problem with the third one is like when um, it is Zemo, right? Yeah, it's Zemo. Yeah, yeah, like all of his all of his dominoes have to fall at a certain point for it to work for the whole thing. Cause if one of those things didn't work out the way he wanted him to, then the whole thing like falls apart in his, in his uh, plot. Um, so that was my one gaping hole with that movie. Um, so I, I still think winter soldiers better than the other two. Although number one, uh, Captain America is, it might, <sighs> It's as I've stated earlier, I'm an origins kind of guy. So the first Avengers, the first Iron Man and the first Captain America and the first Thor, all four of those movies are probably my favorites. Of, some of my favorites of the entire series. So. How you feel, Jason Richardson? Um, I think all the Captain Americas are solid. Nice. Um, you don't when I compare them, um, uh, what's that? You don't have one that you prefer over the others? Um, I think I liked Civil War was good. It it, it was pretty much like an Avengers movie because you had everyone else in it, which kind of made it fun to get you to the next Avengers movie. Um, But I'm going to go on a limb and say um, that Winter Soldier I liked the best because that kind of introduced Black Widow, right? Yep. No, uh, Black Widow was Iron Man 2. Was Iron Man 2? Oh, that's right, it was. Black Widow was Iron Man 2. Okay, she was, I'm getting that. But, she, but, but, the, but, the, but the character I, grew in, in, in Winter Soldier. Yeah. In Winter Soldier, okay. And I just remember there was just some hellified action sequences in Winter Soldier. Oh, yeah. Dude, yeah. the boat sequence at the beginning of that movie is... I love watching that boat you? sequence when they go and they're taking that boat back. Um when he's running around the deck and he's like throwing a shield and then it's like bouncing and he's like, he ends up like turning a corner and it follows him and like yeah. his fight with, um, is it Balrog? Uh, that's yep. in that yeah. sequence, like is just, and he's an MMA fighter, I guess the guy who played George St. Pierre. Yeah. Okay. I, I didn't, I, I don't know who he is from that standpoint, but like that, fight sequence is so hardcore and so cool to watch. Yep. So, but I would, I would say that, um, I mean, of all of them, I like that this, this best is the solo standoffs. Um, I don't see how Thor got as far as it did. I agree. Uh, so the, the first Thor I like, I like a lot. I love the first Thor for the fish out of water storyline. He loses his power. He has to redeem himself. He's in earth and doesn't know what's going on. Like, I feel like the first Thor is very solid from top to bottom. I love the final confrontation scene when he finally gets his hammer back. I like when he tries to go get his hammer and and fails. Like I really enjoy the first Thor. The Dark World is near the very bottom of my Marvel Cinematic Universe rankings. I think it's one of the worst movies they've ever put out. I love Christopher Eccleston. He failed as that character that because he was given a bad character to play... The plot was stupid. I, I didn't care about that movie at all. Uh, and I know everybody loves uh, Taika Waititi, um, but I just didn't feel like Ragnarok gave me that much. I I really... I had high hopes for it, because I, I, I do like uh, uh, Taika Waititi overall, 
just didn't really care for that movie. Us, um, Valkyrie was okay, but but nothing special. Uh, I, I do agree Thor Ragnarok. If you if you watch it again, I, I've watched it again because my boys were watching all the series. Uh-huh. Um, I, I actually it, it's it's one of those movies that it has grown on me a little bit. I enjoy it more the second and third times I've seen it compared to the very first time I saw it. So. Got you. What do, how do you feel about the Thor movies? Uh, I'm pretty much like you. Uh, the first one, you know, it's a, the redemption arc is, is played very well. It actually, and uh, the fact that it introduced Hawkeye just as a cameo, yep. but it just, like I said, threw that nugget down the road uh, for us to pick up on later. is really well placed. Um, Dark World, it's that and the Incredible Hulk go back and forth for me for the worst one in the MCU. Nothing more to say about that. See, I'll argue and, the Incredible Hulk with you. I feel like it's a, I feel like it's the fugitive in a Marvel movie, uh, and I really right. enjoy the Incredible Hulk. Uh, why could they Why could they do something with that once the Avengers really and the solo movie started? You know, doing because universe. Well. Because Universal owns the rights to any Hulk film movie yep. where he's the star. Yep. Yeah, they That's, can they can use him in any Avengers movie, but if you make a solo Hulk movie, he he has to it has to be a Universal release. Exactly, which is why which is why they tied him up in in Thor Ragnarok and played that Planet Hulk Hulk uh, yep. arc to it because that was the only um, way we'd ever get that. Exactly, and I loved it. I absolutely loved it because it put the comic back in the comic book movie. We needed a little bit of, we needed a little bit of laughter. Um, you need a good story, which was well done by Taika Waititi. He doesn't do crap, yeah. and he he made it fun. He made it just. It wasn't was it serious? Yes, but it had an extremely light heart, and that's why um, it's it's. It's like the the Bob Hope Bing Crosby road movies from back in the day. Oh. Uh, to me, that's the modern day incarnation of it. And I see Jason Mayer give, giving me a little laugh <laughs> there and a begrudging acknowledgement. All right. Well, so. um, we've unfortunately hit the two hour talking mark, and that's kind of where I would unfortunately want us to stop for tonight, which sucks because I've still got, I mean, we might have to do a trilogy sequel episode. <laughs> Because I've still got the Oceans trilogy, the Hangover trilogy, the Austin Powers trilogy, the Mighty Ducks trilogy, the first three Rocky movies, the first three Rambo movies, Toy Story, How to Train Your Dragon, Shrek. We didn't even talk about The Mummy, which should have been in the action adventure section. Oh, God, we did that last week. We did. Yeah, we did. Uh, we can Karate skip The Mummy. Trilogy, the Ninja Turtles trilogy. Like There was a bunch of other stuff I had planned to talk about tonight about I was even going to address the Corno- the Cornetto trilogy, the uh, Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, and um, the drinking one. The and World's End. World's End. Uh, but unfortunately, we just talk a lot, and that's my favorite part of the week. I absolutely love getting together with you guys. I love getting to talk about movies. I love all the topics that we discuss. Thank you, the three of you, for being on here with me. And uh, thank you, anybody who's listened. Uh, hopefully, we can have some more dialogue in the future and this will unfortunately be the end of episode three we talked about a lot of trilogies today um and the next episode we're going to do episode four is actually already recorded i'm editing a bunch of it together it is my may the fourth episode uh the star wars day episode um i don't know if i'm going to wait a week to put it out or try to get it out earlier Um, And I don't have an official announcement of what episode five is going to be yet. I've got three or four different categories I'm looking at. Um, What are some inspirational categories? uh, We, uh, I mean, you're going to make me pull up my list now. Uh, Well, we can wrap this up and teaser for your podcast. What was that? You got to have a teaser for your podcast YouTube show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Here we hold on. Here we go. No, no, those are the people there. That's the people that were on best sports movies. Do uh, not say movies uh, is one. What? Where is where is my list? I sent the list to Jason Mayer. How did I? How do I not have this list right here? Uh, you had James Bond as one of as yeah. an episode. Um, uh, 
Sports movies is, is, is one of them. What is, oh, no. Don't do quadro movies. Quadro movies? <laughs> like uh, trilogy. quadrilogies. Fran- Sequels, trilogies, quadros. Oh, God. Dude, I don't even... I, where did my list go? Oh, I know what happened. Hold on. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. I can find my list because it's a Word document. Um... Here we go. Some of the other ones we were going to do are franchises, uh, the 007 episode, uh, genres, uh, where we're actually going to do a game on that one. Uh, I will I will pick genres and everybody that's on the call uh, in, in order, I will randomly pick a name. They have to argue what they think is the best film in that genre. And oh, that'll be fun. Yeah, and then like let's say let's say Jason Richardson picks Halloween for his best horror genre. Nobody after him is allowed to pick that movie. So even if Halloween is your favorite one, you have to argue for a different movie as the best in that genre. So that that episode we're gonna kind of try to turn into a game. Um, that also <clears throat> might when we do the game episode might be. Um, I've put things in motion where we can actually uh, do Shane talks live where anybody that wants to watch us talk could watch on Twitch and be able to submit comments and stuff in in the Twitch chat, where we would then be able to, in real time, have conversations with people that are watching. Um, So that might be, when the genre games happens, that might be one of those times. Um, Sports movies. Um, Yeah, there's there's a lot of future stuff that we might be able to get in. I mean, there is obviously a lot of stuff we're going to be able to get into. Um, there's some actors that I want to do specific episodes for those actors. Um, uh, the comic book, we're, we were going to do a specific comic book episode. Uh, I've got a couple people lined up to do that comic book episode whenever that happens, uh, where it will literally just be talking about all comic book movies. Um, yeah. I thought you were t- was it just, wasn't it comic book movies and like comic, actual comics? Uh, yeah, well, 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 it, We'll be discussing the stories from the comics and how they got translated into film um, and how people felt about it. Uh, I have some super nerdy comic book friends that that are way more advanced into that than I am, and they uh, I'm looking forward to their opinions on how they feel the movies got translated. Um, but yeah, so there's there's like a little teaser of some of the stuff that we have coming up. I don't know which one will be episode five, though. Uh, but the next episode will be the Star Wars one. It was recorded on May 4th. Um, it's it's two hours of us discussing nine Star Wars movies and the TV shows, and it's a lot of fun. So uh, thank you guys for listening. We're now at two hours and seven minutes. I apologize we went so long tonight, um, but this is the highlight of my week is getting to talk movies with some of my best friends. So thank you. It's for still listening. not as long as an Avengers movie. <laughs> Uh, where is that have a good night guys thanks for everybody for listening thank you